Okay, so this is homework help for unit one, worksheet three, and I'm gonna start with question number one. So we wanna graph the following equations. So we're gonna start with um, f of x um, equals two to the x minus one plus three. So the first thing I'm gonna do is wanna get the plus three over to the f of x, right? So I know the one belongs to the x because it's grouped, so that means the plus three must belong to the f of x or the y. So remember, f of x is the same as y. So to move the plus three over to the other side, I'm gonna subtract it, so I'm gonna subtract three over. So I would have y minus three equals two times x minus one. So subtract the three over. So I need to figure out, well, what graph is this? Like is it a linear, quadratic, exponential, absolute value? So there's um, nothing that's going on with this, right? No squared, no absolute value, it's not up in the power, so this is just a graph of a line. So to graph the line, I first want to know, well, what is my h and my k? So that's my start point. And so I look to see what's affecting the x, and it's minus 1. So um, that will be positive 1 to bring it back to 0. And then over here, the opposite over here would be positive 3. So I know my start point is at 1, 3. And so I'm going to do that. So over 1, up 3. And then my slope or my stretch is the number multiplying the x term, so that's here. So my stretch is 2, so I'm going to go up 2 over 1. And then 2 points is enough to graph a line, but then just for accuracy, I'm going to go ahead and do the re reflect, uh, re double reflection point. So I'm also going to go down to left 1 to get that straight line. Okay, so there is f of x. So I have to also graph this one, so negative f of x. So to graph negative f of x, we use a different color here. So what I have to think about is what is going opposite. Is the x value going opposite or the f of x? So because it's on the opposite side, on the outside, and I know this is a y value, right? f of x is the same as y. I want my y values to become opposite. So I want all my y values to become opposite. So I'm going to take each of these three points and I'm going to make their y values negative. So this is at positive 1 right now, so this is the y-axis, right? So I want my positive 1 to become negative 1. And I want 1, 2, 3, I want this positive 3 to become negative 3, so 1, 2, 3. And then I want this one right here, which is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so at positive 5 to become negative 5. Okay, so then all my y values became negative. And if I had any negative y's, they would turn positive, right? It just means all the y values are becoming opposite. So then I'm gonna graph that. And so this one is my negative f of x. And this is my positive f of x. So now for part b, it says to describe the translation of the original function from the parent graph. Right, so from the original, to, um, describe the translation of the original function from the parent graph. So the parent graph, remember, has a start point of zero, zero. So if the parent graph has a start point of zero, zero, how did I move to get to my start, okay? So my start was one, three, right? So my start was one, three. So from zero, zero, I went to the right one, because it's positive, and then I went up three because it's positive. So I went right one and up three. And then for part C, it says describe the reflection from the original function to the modified. So the original function is your f of x to your modified function, which is negative f of x. So we know that all the y values that were positive went negative, right? So everything that was positive went negative. So what's happening? If I go from positive to negative or negative to positive, I'm moving it this way, right? So that is reflected along this axis, which is along the x-axis. Okay. All right, and then let's do, um, Question number two also. Uh, no, let's do number three. 
because it has the negative inside here. Okay, so the same idea. So I know that I need to, um, h of x is the same as y, so I'm gonna make that a y. Um, I wanna put it in standard form. So I have the minus three belongs to the x because it's grouped, but the negative four is not grouped with the x, so it belongs to the y. So I need to move the minus four over to the other side. So I'm gonna do that by adding four. So instead of having just y, I will have y plus four. So now that it's in standard form, I want to recognize the graph. So I have a squared up here, so x squared type of graph, so that makes it be a parabola. So for my parabola, I'm going to do my start point. So what affects the x is here. So I know it's going to start at h, which is 3, because 3 minus 3 is 0. And then over here, um, my k will be negative 4 to zero at back, so negative four plus four is zero. So positive three, negative four. So I'm gonna start with that. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So over three, down four. And then now my stretch is two, not the same as slope because it's gonna be curved sides. So curved sides don't have slope, which is a constant rate of growth. I just have a stretch. So that means I need to go up two over one and reflect it along its line of symmetry. And now remember, I could not go up two over one again because then I would make an absolute value graph. So this is my parabola. Okay. And so now I want to also graph h of negative x. So h of negative x, so the negative is attached with the x, right? It's not on the outside, so that means all of the x's have to become opposite. So any positive becomes negative, and any negative becomes positive. So the x's go opposite. So here, I have this one is at x equals 2, so now I'm going to move it to negative 2. So I'm keeping the height the same, right? But I'm, instead of being at 2, I'm over here at negative 2. This dot, I'm counting 1, 2, 3, 4. So this dot is at 4. I need to keep it at the same height, but now I'm going to go left 4 from the y, so one, two, three, four. So these two dots are these two dots. So instead of at positive two, positive four, it's now at negative two, negative four. And then this one way down here is at one, two, three, it's gonna go over to the left three now at negative three. So one, two, three, right? So instead of being at positive three, x equals positive three, it's now at x equals negative three. So this one is h of negative x and this is just h of x. So now remember part b says describe the translation of the original function from the parent graph. So remember the parent graph is when it started at 0, 0. So parent graph started at 0, 0. So here is the function. So how did I go from 0, 0 to here? And that's my hk. So h was positive 3, k was negative 4. So that means I went to the right 3 and down 4. So right three, and then down four. So I'm just looking here, positive means right, negative means down. And then part C, describe your reflection. So how did the graph on the right move to the graph on the right, uh, the left? So I made all my positive x's negative. So positive x's became negative, so positive became negative. So I'm flipping this way, right? So that means I'm reflecting it across the y-axis. Across or along. Okay, okay and then let's take a look at um, this one here. So for, um, let's do, um, we'll just do the, how about let's do the range on this one. So this is question number nine, the range. So first to find domain range, I first look for arrows to identify any infinities, and I have no infinities. So that means I must have for range a highest value and a lowest value. So I look for where does it look like it's the highest on the graph. This is my highest point here. So my highest point is right here, which is at 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's at 4. 
And then I want to find the lowest point of my graph. It looks like this is the lowest the graph goes, so that would be at 1, 2. So my range is bottom to top, so negative 2 to 4. And it looks like closed dots everywhere, so closed dots. Okay, and there's my range. Okay, and then let's do um, question number 12. So for question number 12, um, we're going to have shifting, so I'm going to do a y equals here so I can put it in standard form. So the plus 1 does not belong to the x, so it needs to move over to the y. So I'm going to subtract it over. So what that means is now I want to look at, um, you know, what is my shifting going to be? So this one's a little different, right? Because we're not really graphing a parent function and shifting it. We're graphing an existing function. So we kind of have to figure out, okay, how do we do, you know, that part of it? And so I know that normally I would say for my HK, it would be at, so I'm going to write it just so that we have it as something to talk about. So my HK would normally be negative 3, positive 1, right? So negative 3, positive 1. And so what that would mean is I'm moving left 3 up 1, right? Left because it's negative, up because it's positive. So that means I have to take my original given graph and I need to move a bunch of dots left 3 and up 1, right? Left 3 and up 1. So I'm going to look at just moving enough points to give me the shape. So I'm going to start here at this one. So I'm going to identify this dot right here, down here. So this is at this, right? These coincide currently, right? Negative 4, negative 1. And I need to move this my pen left 3 up 1. So I'm just going to go left 3 up 1. So this dot I'm moving left 3 up 1. And then I'm going to move this dot now. So I'm just trying to find key points to help this out. So I want to put this dot over here. Make sure I'm on the right mark so it looks like at negative 3, negative 2. And then I'm going to go left 3 up 1. And so this line is now this line. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. So this dot now, so like so now I've got this part of the check mark is done, right? So now I want to do this part of the check mark. So I want to move this dot next. So I'm going to find that corresponding point is right here at the one, and I'm going to go left three, one, two, three, and then up one. And so now I have this line of the check mark. Okay. So now I want to find the next part, a important point, which looks like the peak right here. So I want to find that point and find its corresponding one down here. So that's at 3 and then 4. So it looks like right there. So 3, 4. And now I want to go left 3. So 1, 2, 3, and up 1. Right. So I'm doing left 3, up 1 according to this down here. And then see how it kind of curves. So I want to, you know, mimic that as best as I can. And then the last key point is this one right here. So I'm going to find where that one's at, which looks like it's at 5, 2, so right there. So this dot and this dot correspond. And now I'm going to go left 3 and up 1. And that one looks straight. And so now this whole graph slid 3 units left and up 1.